Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of Valpo Baseball Weekly. It's brought to you by Lake Shore Bone and Joint Institute. Brian Vickery with you. Glad to be joined by the head coach of the Valpo Baseball Program, Brian Schmack, as we look back at a weekend series at Southern Illinois and get ready for a seven-game homestand upcoming. And let's look at the series game by game and start with Friday's game, a game where you out-hit SIU 11-8, to lost the game 4 nothing. If you look at that one, what do you see as the ultimate difference in the game? You know, we had 11 hits, they had eight, but I think, you know, we had 10 singles and they had six extra base hits out of the eight, you know, so they were just able to do a little bit more damage with the ones that they had. And, you know, we, I guess we scattered our, our, our 11 um, and just couldn't capitalize on it when we needed it. So uh, they took advantage of it and, and got the big ones when they needed it. Colin Fields continue to pitch well, but it's really been tough in terms of getting run support in his starts. Uh, how challenging can that be for a pitcher when uh, they seem to have to try to be perfect out there, but he seemed to handle it pretty well. But just what's that like as a pitcher when you're pitching in those 0-0 games? Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, obviously, it's the Friday starter. So, I mean, he's the one that gets you off to, to, to a good weekend, and, you know, you're facing their Friday guy as well. So those are always going to be usually closer games, and you've got to be able to separate what the offense can do because you're not – going up against their Friday guy, you're going to get those hitters. So, um, but you, you probably figure that those games are going to be tighter and more low, low scoring. So you have to really focus and, and not let, you know, the, the lack of maybe offense on those days affect what you do. So I think he's actually done a really, really good job of that. I mean, he hasn't, uh, doesn't seem to let it affect him. You know, his body language hasn't changed and mentality he just is trying to control what he can control. And he's been successful in that so far. You mentioned extra base hits and you had more of them in each of the next two games and seven of your 14 hits in Saturday's game went for extra bases, a lot of extra base hits in Sunday's win as well. Kind of similar games in the sense that you got out to big leads early, SIU came back, they came back to win the Saturday game, you held on for the win the Sunday game. Just kind of thoughts when you think about those two games in the series. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of the guys, the way the weekend ended up because, you know, obviously Saturday was pretty pretty tough, you know, when you have that big a lead and, you know, it is early and they're a very good offensive team, uh, especially at their place. So, um, you know, we knew the game wasn't over, you know, and, and you got to keep playing and they did come and get, come back and get us, you know, so to have it start to unfold possibly the same way on Sunday, a lot of thoughts can roll through your mind, you know, and it's like, here we go again, or how's this going to happen type stuff. But the guys, they stopped it. And at the end of the day, they got the win, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's an extremely tough league. You kind of see what's happening around the league. And, and uh, you know, so, so they're a really good team. So to be able to hold on and take a game at third place from the number one team at that time is is good. And, and it's impressive. And I hope we can build off of it. Nolan Tucker's guy had a lot of injuries over his first few years, but he's continued to swing the bat well this season. I think he was eight for 12 over the weekend. So what have you seen from him this year? Uh, just been a little bit more consistent hitting the fastball. You know what I mean? I think he's had trouble at times previous years and in, in the short stints he's been in there, but um, he, he's been really good to that. And he, he knows his strengths right now and he's just sticking to a game plan and executing it. So, um, you know, I'm happy for him that he's been able to do that. And, and uh, it's been good for him to, to, to lengthen out the lineup a little bit, so to speak, uh, in the middle of the order. So um, it's been very good. As you look ahead to this weekend, Dallas Baptist will be in town and maybe they're not where they normally are in the league standings, but you look at some of the wins they have in the non-conference in terms of top 25 wins, where they are in the RPI, just uh, what are your thoughts on this year's version of DBU? You know, kind of like I said a couple weeks ago when Missouri State came in at 0-6, it's very deceiving. You know, I mean, they're obviously a lot better team than what the record is showing. You know, it also goes to show how the heart of the league is, like I mentioned. But uh, they're going to be tough. I mean, it's, you know, it's 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 a game uh, games we look forward to um, this coming weekend because we know that, like I said, you, you find out where you're at. And, you know, the guys are ready for the challenge and we're just looking forward to coming in for the last time. There is the head coach of the Valpo baseball program, Brian Schmack. Again, a long homestand start. Schedule will get underway, weather permitting, at 2 o'clock on Tuesday against Western Michigan. And then DB will be in town for a three-game series this weekend. For all the latest in Valpo athletics and Valpo baseball, check out valpoathletics.com or check out the team on social media. This has been Valpo Baseball Weekly, and it's brought to you by Lakeshore Bone & Joint Institute.